Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing well. Today has a nice Thursday, so I was just looking at a few cards and I th thought I would uh, take you along with me uh, for the ride here. And so I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight names, and we'll just fly through them really quickly. But uh, some of them are names that I've mentioned in the past few weeks, and we've got a couple that are just um, always on everyone's radar. So I thought I would uh, just say, uh, here's here's how I do it. And if it works, great. And if you get anything out of it, terrific. And if you don't, so be it. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video anyway. So Vladdy Jr., PSA 10. So when I mentioned him in the first basement thing, I think he's firmly in speculation mode, 21 years old. Um, pretty eh, roughish start compared to what people were expecting. Um, so I put him firmly in the uh, speculation, um, speculation pile. But um, that doesn't mean that he's not... Uh, someone that you should be uh, paying attention to because if he has a couple of really good years, um, the card could really, uh, really take off. So um, I like the raw version of it. Uh, all well and good. But here's the card ladder prices here. So you can see Vladdy uh, really started to take off um, in uh, December of last year and hit a high of $200. And this is for the PSA 10 no name and really consolidated for a while. And it's kind of broken out of that range right now. So he's really out of favor. But it looks like he may be starting to uh, accumulate again. So you can see a lot of buying in this area here. And then you had very few buys and sells, limited transactions, and that can really push the price crazy in one direction or another. Um, but if you get a lot of volume, um, then that is a, a sign that um, there's a lot of interest again. I think we're starting to see that again. And you could see this card uh, start to pop back up towards that $110 level or something like that. And if he has a good, he has to back it up. If he has a good season next year, you could be back in this range again. And maybe he's in that 120, 140 range um, where people that are, young but doing well you know we look at like acuna and stuff like that we will look at acuna um where their uh, where their cards are kind of sitting and he could be right on that path so um next card that we will look at is mr tatis i don't have to say too much about him right <laughs> um let's see we'll go in and i think he is back one here so yeah so fernando tatis jr um you can see his his cards have really been uh, accumulated uh, a, a ton of buying here and then he had a few crazy purchases not a lot of volume and got to this elevated level here so we'll zoom in on it a little bit here so um you had this breakout after all this accumulation and that's when people started chasing at that point and so when you see limited volume in these price swings here just stay away um then you had a lot of a lot of interest at the top and so you had um it's it's one of two things a lot of buying a lot of selling you know so it's just a lot of volume at this point here so um you saw a lot of what turned out to be selling here at this volume but what you're seeing down here is this card is trended downwards um you're seeing a lot of accumulation again kind of like you saw in here and then now it's kind of breaking out of this this downtrend here so you could see this move now <clears throat> i think i mentioned that i did see this card coming into that one one you know that 125 dollar area or something like that or 100 um so this didn't make a lot of sense to me uh, especially for a young player that speculation zone these guys probably should be in that 150 area here you know you had um some players you know freddie freeman you know a, a couple of years ago you know yelich and mookie Betts and all those guys were kind of there now that they've graduated to you know especially freeman and Betts more of a, a serious hall of fame track you can see those prices start to get up to the two two fifty five hundred dollars or whatever so the guys that are maybe on track but there's something going on you can see that they're uh their prices are kind of sticky in that 120, 150 area. So when they get up here, it's like you're going to have to prove it. Um, but you can see that it's kind of breaking out again. So Tatis, another good year next year. Yeah, this could be upwards of a $200 card as people think he's more of a generational type talent here. So um, this is kind of the, the area where I like to, to buy him. Um, I've got plenty of raw, and so I'm probably not going to do it. Full disclosure, but if you are looking for a Tatis, this may be the time to uh, to jump in that as I think the, the off-season speculation mode it's just going to happen right away. Um, I'm not sure there's going to be much of a downtime this year. Sometimes there is downtime, and this year I'm not sure that you get it. So, yeah, let's just throw out the big dog here. This is reverse alphabetical order. So, um, kind of, kind of, you know, that's how it goes sometimes here. So, um, we have things set up. So, 2018 update, and you can see that there was a lot of accumulation at pretty cheap prices, and then it just absolutely rocketed up. It's just kind of stair stepped up, and then again, you have a ton of vi buying volume here. Um, let's just go right to the. Uh, so a ton of buying volume here. And then eventually when it kind of broke out, you had that speculation mania mode again. And then so now you're seeing a lot of heavy volume again. So a lot of the people that sold here and like, oh, my gosh, I missed out. Um, when the price gets back to this level here, um, these people are like, well, here it is again. Here's my chance. And so you start to see this kind of curl upward a little bit here. And so I think you'll have more speculation on Soto. Again, he's in that speculation mode. 
$150 area, that speculation price zone, where um, I think people are going to start to accumulate and really um, take, a, another, in, take a lot of interest uh, in his cards once again. And so uh, another good season next year, if he does what he did this year over the course of a full season, then he could be taken very seriously and have a sustainable two to two hundred and fifty dollar uh, price tag. Um, injuries could drop him back down to that hundred dollar range or a lousy season, and I would uh, I would just buy more at that point. But this seems like a reasonable spot to uh, to start looking seriously at his cards if you don't have a high grade example, and that's what you're looking for. Is raw right now are about I think forty dollars, which you know they were upwards of seventy or eighty uh, for a period of time as well. So um, if you don't have a Soto, I think this is um, as good a time as you're going to have for a long time, perhaps, uh, to uh, to get that card here. So um, one of the players that I was pretty high on, really high on in my most recent video that only I've watched, so go watch that one, um, was uh, Alex Bregman. And um, the reason that uh, that I like him so much is on my tracker. You know, a lot of these third basemen are just kind of sitting in that 40 to $50 range. Um, Arenado is the uh, is the, kind of the high man there, and I think that might be a little too expensive. But he's got a he's got a decent track record here. Um, he is kind of on a, a you know Hall of Fame tracker path, but he needs to keep it up for a few more years. He's he's 29, and uh, some of these some of these younger guys they're really in the speculation area there for their prices. Um, but with Bregman especially, um, top two top 10 MVPs, two All Star games. Um, I'll repeat what I said the other day. Um, there are some question marks here, so the, the price is perhaps uh, validated. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm at this price. I'm going to take a shot that he's the real deal and see what we can uh, see what we can get out of him here. So um, move over to Alex Bregman. So yeah, so here's his here's his price chart here, and you can see that he's, there's a lot of accumulation happening. And if you kind of uh, just just graph it out, that thirty dollar level, and you know this is this might one of these two is probably my purchase. Um, but um, you know, as it kind of you know had it stayed below that thirty dollar level and it kind of spiked up, and now above thirty dollars, I think people are uh, okay holding it. And there's some sort of, there's some chasing going on here. So not a high volume card by any stretch. So you're gonna get some some crazy moves here. But I think people are recognizing that um, this was a cheap card for a guy that's really you know came in young and is putting up the numbers at an early age. Um, all he's you know, starting to tick all the boxes. Except for the um, can he hit without a garbage can um, box, so um, I'm I'm guessing that he can. I I I like him a lot here, and his cards are uh, are ripping. And you know, clearing these highs here really sets up for uh, for a move into that fifty sixty dollar area, which is probably where he should be for a legitimate um, you know a little bit more a little bit more than speculation. You know, those legitimate guys, you know, speculation guys are in that thirty dollar area, and he's I think he's more than a speculation at this point. I think he's a little bit more investable. So that fifty sixty dollar area. Um, is uh, is kind of what I'm looking for, and so I, I really like down here. If you get another crack at that 30 to 40, do it. Um, now this is the Chrome, so you may be able to get a, a paper for 40. But um, Alex Bregman is a is a player that uh, I like a lot, and um, you know perhaps you want to consider him as well. So um, let's see, who do we have next? Oh, never heard of this guy. So uh, do 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 do. Um, so he had a, a a nice nice World Series. Well, his team had a nice World Series. So Cody Bellinger, um, I've liked him for a long time. I kind of you know recently picked up a couple of his cards that um, that I've wanted, and I probably paid. You know, yeah, I don't think I paid too much at all because you know I didn't chase into this. <laughs> um, I, I was actually kind of you know one of these a lot of accumulation in this area here, and a big pop, and it kind of came back down into this area, and. Um, in between, you had a lot of accumulation, and you had this kind of mania where you just had a couple of sales that really spiked that price. So you almost just take that off of the table here, and then people just trying to maybe get out or something like that, oh, take advantage of those high prices. Um, so the prices have trended down, and now it's in an area where there was a decent amount of buying. And I think um, if you're looking for a high-grade example, again, that 150 area seems to be where guys that are they're not speculative by any chance, they're on a track. He's got the MVP, and you know he's got the All Star games, and so um, he's very young. A lot could happen, but he is on a track, and that's probably a pretty fair price for where for where he's had. Again, if he has a couple more MVPs in a few years, then he is a four or five hundred dollar card. Um, but as it stands right now, that 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 you know one twenty five to one fifty area is uh, is a lot of where those guys with a, a bit of a track record are kind of settling in, and that's where he's at right now. So um, this seems like a pretty again a pretty decent spot to uh, start picking up a Bellinger. Um, if you if you've missed out, and you can still get his raw pretty cheap as well. So don't 
PSA 10 is very apples to apples, and when you get to raw, there's all sorts of things going on. So that's why I use that. But you know, I'm a, I'm a raw guy personally, except for you know, if I can get a, a PSA 10 for you know 50 bucks or whatever, then I'll look at it. But so this one, I would probably look at a raw. But if it gets down to 100 or if it gets down to a year, I'm I'm all in. I don't think you'll see that again unless you know he falls off the falls off the trail. Excuse me, but you know that 150 area seems to be where uh, a lot of buying has uh, has come into play here. So, um, whoops, I just messed all that up. That could <laughs> that could take me a little while to figure out here. So, um, Ozzy Albies, uh, white jersey. So this is a player that I've been high on for a while. Uh, I've had a few of his cards, and I'm starting to get a few more of his more interesting variations here. And you can see that um, hasn't done a whole lot for a period of time here and so let's see if i can which one did i have here um all right i'm not too far off the track um so he had this steady steady rise you know the mania wasn't there with him as it was with a lot of these other guys here so um he uh he he, he had the dip like everybody else but you can see that you know that run that 40 dollar area people were kind of buying and then as a dip below then people tried to sell you know it's like oh geez i just want my money you know I bought here and you know you missed that it's like i just want my money back <laughs> um and so it kind of broke out again and so his prices are trending upwards again and at that 40 or 50 dollar level for what this guy is doing um again i think that's probably relatively fair price you know i think it could get up to 60 or 70 but you know i think once people really recognize you know what he's doing and that braves team is going to be a, a really good team for years to come I, I look for his prices to continue to to trend upwards again so if he performs at a level that he's been performing um you know this if you can get it around 40 bucks that's a uh, i think that's a really nice price for mr ozzy albies so let's see uh, just just do two more here so um Akina. All right, Robert Acuna, um, another Braves guy. So he and Albies, they're going to kind of play off of each other here for a, for a long time. And it's kind of interesting. Um, his prices have just been sideways. You know, he had this monster spike uh, at the uh, at the beginning of the year. And, um, you know, a number of cards, you know, kind of continued to spike. And he, he really fell off. And so, again, you had a lot of this accumulation. And then um, just, just kind of, you know, spotty buying here. And then it kind of came down. It's just gone in this range. And now it's starting to fall below this range a little bit here so there may be some questions and i'm not sure what those questions are and i don't have an answer for them um but you know in this area here you know, maybe he should be, he should probably be in that 150 area this is probably you know a fair price for guys that are more more than just speculation as we've seen with like the bellingers and stuff like that but he's got to do a little bit more uh, he still is pretty young but you know if he gets down to and he could get down to you know 100 100 100 120 bucks or something like that um, this is your chance for a high grade Acuna if uh, if that's what you are interested in. So as these prices trend down and they break below this area here, you're just going to have an absence of buyers. Um, and all these people are going to be like, oh geez, <laughs> they may they may overwhelm the sellers may overwhelm the buyers as it gets down into here. But then you have all these accumulation here that should start to kind of pick up in that area. So I'm not saying it gets down to 100 bucks, but if it does, it's a very strong buy. But I could see these things go a little bit lower. And I am right now um, picking up a couple variations sneak preview uh, for my next mail video um, of this uh, of this particular card. I think the prices are getting to an extremely interesting uh, interesting point here. And we'll wrap it up here with the likely AL MVP. And I, I think he's a terrific player, but he is 33 years old, um, does not have the commensurate war for a Hall of Fame track, so his hobby longevity is uh, is in doubt. And one of the things I pointed out in my first baseman video is this is nuts. <laughs> um, for guys, for what guys are, what he's doing, you know, this is a fifty or sixty dollar card when you're looking at like the Eric Hosmers and all those guys that are really good players, and they could put up a, a terrific season. And like, like I said, I think Breo probably wins an MVP, and maybe you see a little more action. Um, maybe you see more of his cards get graded and start to come into the market. But people are doing that to likely sell, and so I think you could have overwhelming selling. And um, you know, I was looking for prices in that fifty to sixty dollar area to, to line up with um, with the cards that are in not really speculation mode but just player i like mode people will pay that for a player that they like but there isn't the you know the long-term prospects aren't aren't terrific on that and here we are a couple of sales later again the volume is super light there's just not a lot of selling or buying going on here um but you are in that area here and so this is one i said you'll probably wait and you'll get a better price on it and 
I think you're getting here's your chance to get a better price on it. So if you're a Brayu fan, do not buy him because you think over the long term this card's going to rocket back up. I mean, I doubt that. Again, 33 year olds um, that um, you know think like Paul Canerco or something like that. What a terrific player! An awesome career. Got started a little bit late, and you know it's it's his cards you could probably get for nothing. I'm just talking off the top of my head here i could be completely wrong on that but you know the guys that when they retire and they're not on the hall of fame path those cards just really fall back um you know the there's just not the demand for them anymore and so that's what you're seeing i think with uh, mr jose Abreu. again you could get a little pop for for the mvp but um if you want them you know, in that 40 to 50 dollar range probably uh, a decent price and i think that's where you're at so um that's probably what i got for you today so um again just my thought process so i am oh you know what no there's one more there was one more um I just don't have, they just don't have them on card ladder. <laughs> so um, Manny Machado, um, one of my bigger acquisitions over the past couple of weeks. Um, I just think he's completely undervalued relative to a lot of these guys. I mean, you look at the All-Star Games, the MVPs, and I thought 50 or $60 was kind of a crazy price. You are starting to see that those prices go up to the $70 or $80 level. If he has one more good season next year like he did this year, and you look at that lineup, this is probably a guy that's going to be at that $150 level with uh, with Acuna, Soto, Freeman, uh, well, Freeman's at the two hundred dollars, <laughs> or excuse me, Freeman, yeah, Freeman about two hundred dollar level. Um, I think I did a, I, did I do a Freeman? We'll do Freeman real quick here. Um, but you know, Bellinger and all that, all that kind of good stuff here. So I think this card could be a double from here. So fifty or sixty, maybe. I don't know if you see that again. If you do, jump on it. Um, seventy or eighty um, is probably is where it's at, and it's still probably a decent price if he continues to keep doing what he's doing because he's well on track here. So. Um, let's, yeah, we'll finish with Freeman. I, I looked at him. I don't think I did anything with it. Um, we'll just do it real quick here. So anyways, pretty Freeman. Um, you can see that I did a lot of accumulation in here, uh, trending upwards and, uh, you know, we had very little buying in this area here and it just really pushed the prices up. And now you can see them starting to trend back down. I think you can, you know, $200 card. I mean, yeah, that's probably a fair price for a, a guy that is more and more likely to make the Hall of Fame. And, you know, when if you, if that's more of a lock, then it's a four or five, four or $500 card. Um, you know, Mookie Betts cards are right on that area. So that's an, that's an update. He's an update or no, he's, a, I think he's a series one. Um, so, it may not get to that level because there's probably a little bit more of a production run here. But I think um, even if it gets down to that 150 area and where there's a decent amount of buying and, 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 a, and a nice level of support, um, for buyers to kind of step in people might be waiting for it maybe it doesn't get down that down that low so maybe it's not a 500 dollars card but again as it becomes more evident that he's a hall of famer then these prices should creep up and it's come right back into a zone where uh, people have been pretty uh, comfortable to, to to buy his card here so uh freddie freeman you know, don't buy those low volume spikes it comes up like don't chase because you're going to be one of these you're gonna be one of these dots here um, be one of these dots <laughs> where where there's a lot of it. Don't don't be one of these dots where there's just very very little uh, action going on here. So Freddie Freeman overall, um, consider it if it's in your budget. Um, you can still get Roz for like twenty or thirty bucks, and that's probably a way to go. Um, when I was buying Roz a few years ago, um, every single one I got was really well centered and looks beautiful. And I think that's a card that um, you can you can probably be really happy with um, if you're just uh, if you just pay a little bit of attention. So all right, let's call it a day here. Uh, appreciate it and uh, have a good one. Thank you.